the assembly will hear an address from His Excellency Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf, on behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America, and I invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, my fellow leaders, about a week ago, I stood on the other side of the world in Vietnam. This is a multilateral and regional bodies to help take on the challenges of their time at the International Monetary Fund. We're going to continue our common purpose, collective action, to bring new approaches to our shared challenges, drugs, to reduce the human cost of this affliction, and it is real. Targeted public investments, we can unlock enormous amounts of private sector financing. The G7 has played the road from freedom of navigation to overflight to level economic playing field that have helped safeguard security and prosperity for decades. But we also have responsible global leadership. We don't, we don't need to agree on integrity, human rights. These are the core tenets of the UN Charter. And this year, we're proud to rejoin UNESCO. We also recognize that to meet the new challenges of our decades-old institutions and approaches, they must be updated to keep peace with the world. We have to bring in more leadership and capability that exists everywhere, especially from regions that have not, had not always been fully included. We have to grapple with the challenges that are more connected and more complex. And we have to make sure we're delivering for people everywhere, not just somewhere, everywhere. Simply put, the 21st century, 21st century results are badly needed. They're needed to move us along. That starts with the United Nations, starts right here in this room. In my address to this body last year, I announced the United States will support expanding the Security Council increasing the number of permanent and non-permanent members. The United States has undertaken serious consultation with many member states and will continue to do our part to push ref more reform efforts forward, look for points of common ground, and make progress in the year ahead. We need to be able to break the gridlock that too often stymies progress and blocks consensus on the Council. We need more voices, more perspectives at the table. My fellow leaders, we gather once more at an inflection point in world history. With the eyes of the world upon all of you, all of us, as President of the United States, I understand the duty my country has to lead in this critical moment, to work with countries in every region, linking them in common cause, to join together with partners who share a common vision of the future of the world, where our children do not go hungry and everyone has access to quality health care, where workers are empowered and our environment is protected, where entrepreneurs and innovators everywhere can access opportunity everywhere, where conflicts are resolved peacefully and countries can chart their own course. The United States seeks a more secure, more prosperous, more equitable world for all people, because we know our future is bound to yours. Let me repeat that again. We know our future is bound to yours. And no nation can meet the challenges of today alone. The generations that precede us, preceded us organized this body, the United Nations, and built international financial institutions and multilateral and regional bodies to help take on the challenges of their time. It isn't always perfect. It wasn't always perfect. But working together, 
the world made some remarkable and undeniable progress that improved the lives of all people. We avoided the renewal of global conflict while lifting more than one billion people, one billion people out of extreme poverty. We together expanded access to education for millions of children. We saved tens of millions of lives that would have otherwise been lost to preventable and treatable diseases like measles, malaria, tuberculosis. HIV AIDS infections and deaths plummeted in no small part because of PEPFAR's work in more than 55 countries, saving more than 25 million lives. It's a profound testament to what we can achieve when we act together. We take on tough challenges and an admonition for all of us to urgently accelerate our progress so that no one's left behind because too many people are being left behind. The United Nations must continue to preserve peace, prevent conflict, and alleviate human suffering. And we embrace nations stepping up to lead new ways and to seek new breakthroughs on hard issues. For example, on Haiti, the Caribbean community is facilitating a dialogue among Haitian society. I thank President Ruto of Kenya's — I thank him for his willingness to serve as the lead nation of a UN-backed security support mission. I call on the Security Council to authorize this mission now. The people of Haiti cannot wait much longer.